you've been asking for it, well, I got it. Today, we are going to be looking at a super cool guitar, and one that I've been waiting for for a long time. This is the Gretsch G2410TG4 Turquoise. Turquoise something, whatever it is. This is not just a really, really good looking guitar. It is an experience, especially if you've never played a fully hollow electric guitar with a Bixby, let's not forget. So let's dive into it. I mean, guys, look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. And I've got to say, I'm not usually one that likes gold hardware, but it looks phenomenal. I love the Bixby. It looks super cool in gold, and it just sets off really nice against the turquoise. So look-wise, this guitar is a bomb. I've got to say, it's got that classy attitude, that typical Gretsch styling, but it also has that kind of vibe where you know it's gonna be sweet, it's refined, but at the same time, it can kick you in the nuts in two seconds. So, really cool, I love the way it looks. Let's talk, as usual, specs. So, straight out the box, this comes with the arched, really nicely arched, actually, maple laminate body. And this, as I said before, is fully hollow, so you don't have the center block at all. One of the things that makes the Streamliner series interesting, I think, except for the kind of price range, is that they've made little more modern tweaks to the design. And one of them is actually making it slightly thinner. So this is still going to be thicker than your 335, for example, but it's quite a bit thinner than your traditional Gretsch style would have been. So it is a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit lighter as well. But overall, it's a good size in terms of thickness of the body. Very, very nice. Moving up to the headstock, you have the traditional Gretsch headstock. Really nice as always. Very nice shape. I've always been a fan of the Gretsch shape. Then you have kind of, if I have to say a bit, nondescript tuners on here. No branding, nothing on them. Just gold, obviously, to go with the look of the guitar. There's really not that much to say about the tuners. But if we turn it around, you have a very, very well cut synthetic nut. So it looks and feels great. Very good job there, Gretsch. You have the standard 22 medium jumbo frets. But what is a little different here, as opposed to a lot of the more modern Gretsches, is you don't have the thumbnails on it. The inlays are actually the Hunt ones. And this is kind of a vintage thing that Gretsch used to do on some of the older models. And I think on this guitar, it looks really, really good. It would have been a pity maybe to have the more modern ones on it, just because I think it kind of adds a little bit to the aesthetics and the design of the whole guitar. Moving down in terms of controls, well, it's a Gretsch. You got Gretsch style controls. What you have is your usual selector switch up here, usual master volume for Gretsch. And then you have neck volume, bridge volume, and a single tone control for the pickups. So you don't have two tone controls, you just have one. I'm perfectly cool with that, but just something to note. Then we come to the pickups. The pickups 
are not Filtertrons, although they kind of look like Filtertrons. The pickups are Gretsch's own BT2S Broadtrons, which although they are styled very much to look like a Filtertron, like the original kind of pickup that Gretsch used in their guitars, these are Gretsch's more modern pickups that they include in a lot of their recent series. And there are very substantial differences with the more Filtertron type pickup. If you were to compare it to some things, this is slightly more humbuckerish in style, if that's even a word, is it humbuckerish? Well, well, whatever. If you expect those really jangly, that really kind of defined high end that you get in Filtertrons, these Broadtrons are a little bit darker, they're a little bit sweeter maybe, um, so it's it's just a different beast altogether. So just something to note if you think these are Filtertrons, they're not. Moving down, you have the traditional mounting for the bridge area, and you have a very standard adjustomatic, I think they call it, bridge. The little mounting area is Laurel, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So this is like you would find in any kind of Gibson, etc. Good quality as well. And finally, I left it for last, but the star of the show is this Bixby. This is a licensed Bixby Trem, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Gotta say, I really love the way it looks on this guitar. Very, very nice. And also when you're playing, it just adds that character. You can kind of get those shimmery sounds. Really, really cool. So that's about it. It's very simple in construction. As I said, fully hollow. Everything looks very nice. If we take a look at the general kind of QC of the instrument, I've got to say overall, it's finished very nicely. There are no massive, massive blemishes, dings or whatever. But just to note, this isn't a... 2000 buck guitar. This is a sub 500 buck guitar and you're always going to have little defects somewhere. It's very rare to find an absolutely mint perfect guitar in terms of paint job, in terms of everything. Here what you have is really very nicely done binding, double binding on both sides and where the streamliner version differs from the Electromatic, for example, that has binding as well, is you also get that kind of black pinstripe, I don't know, hopefully you can see it, on the binding. Really nicely done. Everything is very, very precise. I think the only blemishes I can personally see on this guitar is there's a little bit of bleed here in terms of the cream binding and a little blue maybe something was a little dirty and then you have a teeny but i say teeny little again where the neck fits kind of 
don't even know what to call it. It's just not a straight line here. And that's about it. But everything is really, really well done. The F holes aren't particularly large. They are more modern F holes. I guess you could, if you wanted to, complain about the fact that they've been kind of painted black on the inside, not to stick out too much, but I actually don't mind it at all. It looks very nice. They are nice and neat. As far as I can see in the cavities, everything is clean, looks very, very good. I haven't taken this apart because it's a nightmare on hollow bodies. So I'm not gonna do it. But yeah, it looks really, really good. As I said, the nut is cut very well. The paint job is really good. And overall, the neck, although fully glossy painted, hasn't been sticky at all, which means I guess they didn't overdo it with the poly and it just feels very comfortable actually. So thumbs up for the overall QC quality control. The guitar came like this. I haven't actually adjusted anything, tuned it up. That's about it. In terms of action wise, it's fairly standard. It's what you expect. I really, on a model like this, I really wouldn't want it much lower. I think it works really well. It was almost intonated perfectly. So overall, really, really good, straight from Gretsch. Quite impressed with it actually. The frets, no fret sprouts. They are kind of your standard well done frets. So they're not rounded, but you know, they're perfectly acceptable. Very nice. Didn't feel gritty at all. So really nicely polished. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with the kind of just quality of this instrument. I've got to be honest. And I didn't really know what to expect at this price point, but yeah, very, very nice. Okay, so moving on, because you guys always write in the comments. Yeah, he talks too much, blah, 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 not enough play. Okay, fine, it's just that I have a lot to say. Stop whining. So what I'm going to do is now plug in, and we'll run through kind of the sounds that we can get on this. So just before we do that, I do want to do something really quickly, because this is a hollow body guitar. We got to play it unplugged. <laughs> I'm just picking this up with my normal studio mic, so it's at a fair distance. It's pretty sweet sounding, right? That is one of the really cool things about having a fully hollow electric guitar. You can actually play it unplugged and it doesn't sound like crap like most electric guitars sound. It has a reasonable volume. A good amount of projection as well. So really cool. Extra bonus, I guess. Cool to be watching TV and just strumming with this. Kind of gives you a little more of that satisfaction to hear it properly. Anyways, let's plug in. Okay, so I'm all plugged in. We are going straight from the Gretsch into the UA Pedals Dream 65, then into my audio interface and my DAW. No post effects, nothing. So let's start with kind of a low gain sound that the Dream 65 excels at. Thank you. 
Okay, let's turn the gain up a little bit. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed those sounds. It's time, I think, to go through some of the pros and cons of the guitar and finish off with my final thoughts. So let's start with the main thing, which this is a hollow body, but I was so surprised how comfortable it is to play. It's actually super light. I like the weight. It's just over six pounds, I think. It's really a nice thickness so it's not like a massive chunk of wood it just feels really comfortable I think it sits really nicely there's a little bit of neck dive even with the Bixby but it just feels really good it's a lot more balanced than say a less pole would be you know where this end is always like kind of dropping off your leg it just feels really good both whether you're sitting down or standing up so that's the first thing about it then let's move on to the neck i really like the neck the neck and i forgot to say it earlier is what gretch i think calls a thin u but you know what? It's just a very, very standard, I would say, comfortable neck. I don't see people being uncomfortable, except if you're one of those shredded dudes that only play super flat and super thin Ibanez necks, then maybe you'll find this chunky. But it's not at all. It's very, very comfortable. It fits very comfortable. Remember, guys, you're not going to play extreme death metal on here. You're not going to be in the super high notes either. That's not what this guitar is for. So for the purpose of the guitar, the shape and the feel of the neck is actually perfect. You can get those cool rhythms. You can get those kind of bar chords done very, very easily. And it's a very comfortable neck. Even for the leads, it lets you really dig into it. So it's a very nice neck. Moving on, as I always say, and you guys let me know in the comments if you disagree, but 99% of the reason we buy guitars is based on the look. And the look for me personally is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Even with age, it will age really nicely, I think. It feels a little bit delicate, so I'm kind of like scared to scratch it at the moment. But you know what? Screw that. I'll scratch it. I'll play it. I'll do whatever I want on it because it's just a cool guitar. It looks cool. The sound is uniquely Gretsch. So it has that Gretsch attitude. It has that real Gretsch kind of vibe that comes out of it. Yes, the pickups aren't original Filtertrons, they're Broadtrons. So they are slightly different, but I really understand why Gretsch did it. I really understand why they kind of moved it into maybe a more humbuckerish a more i want to say modern era simply because these are more versatile so they do maybe lack a little bit of top end they do maybe sound slightly darker i don't mean muddier but slightly darker in terms of the low end but you know what they really get the job done and they take gain surprisingly well Again, just to clarify, I'm not talking death metal. I am talking, if you want to put it through a Marshall, if you want to put it through something like that, it will do your classic rock. It will do some of these higher gain settings fairly well for a fully hollow body guitar. So I was really surprised how well it handled the gain. I've got to say, out of the two, the neck pickup 
Now, neck pickups are a funny beast because, for example, and I don't want to shit on anyone, Gibson neck pickups on Les Pauls, etc., sometimes are a bit hit and miss. They can be way too dark. You really need to play around with them. You really need to lower them to the furthest possible from the strings in order to get a bit of clarity from the strings. This one, I did lower it slightly. That's the only adjustment I made. But you know what? It retains that really nice note separation. It retains that clarity. It's a wonderfully sweet neck pickup. And I've got to say, I really do like it more than the bridge. The bridge feels great. It sounds great. But the neck really stole the show for me. That's what a proper neck pickup should sound like. Pure jazz when you're up here in a clean setting, really beautiful, very melodic jazz. Then you can even put it in the middle and you get the best of both worlds. So the neck pickup for me kind of almost brings the bridge pickup to life when you put it in the middle. And that's again, something that I'm really surprised and inspired by this guitar. I've never been a middle pickup person. Um, I am now because this is really, really interesting. And for me, it is the neck pickup that's doing it to this guitar. So really, really very impressed with the pickups. Very good quality pickups. I like these BT2S Broadtrons. As always, I've got to talk about some of the less good things or some of the observations that I think you guys would be interested to hear about because you know, there are things that you need to know when you're purchasing this guitar. And I've got to say, this guitar is pretty straightforward. It doesn't have any really hidden surprises. But still important to note, I've played it live a few times and you've got to be careful with feedback. It's not this guitar's fault. It's all fully hollow bodies. So it's just important to know that if you're playing a very high volumes live with a physical amp, and you put on a bit of gain, you're gonna get a relatively decent amount of feedback through it just by design. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Second thing, for a lot of you, I suspect you might be slightly, slightly disappointed in the raw power of the bridge pickup because I found it really nice, really clear, but maybe, maybe it's lacking a bit of punch. But you know, again, that's an upgrade if you want to upgrade it. I personally don't have that problem, but if you want to make it even more versatile, you could upgrade both pickups, the bridge pickup, whatever. It's up to you guys. And again, just uh, think about slightly more of a pain in the ass to do it on a hollow body guitar. As I mentioned earlier, the finish might be a little bit delicate, although it, it is absolutely beautiful. I can see this getting scratched and ding quite easily. But again, it is what it is, right? If you want something to look beautiful with a beautiful color like this, then it's going to eventually get dinged if you play it live, if you play it in the studio. But you know what? Maybe it'll add to the charm of this guitar even more. And finally, just one for you purists out there. Yes, there are certain things that make this a slightly more modern take. So the thinness of the body, pickups, the kind of tuners, etc. It might not be to your taste. You might want an original thing. But I think keeping in mind the price range and kind of the bracket the Streamline series are in, I don't really see any other way of doing it. And I think this appeals to a broader market than an original spec equivalent of this wood. So ultimately, it's just something to be aware of. It's a slightly more modern take. Oh, and I almost forgot one of the massive, massive pros of this guitar is the Bigsby. This licensed Bigsby I find is really, really good. Look, there's horror stories on the internet about Gretsch's with Bigsby's. People can't keep them in tune. They go out of tune. i not saying I dive bombed with it, but for what you need to do with the Bigsby, because of the way the nut is set up, because of how it's all set up generally, it plays perfectly. You do those nice changes in pitch. Everything goes back. 
doesn't go out of tune. So I've had, and I've played this quite extensively before doing this review, I've had really no problems at all. It's really impressive. Maybe again, your mileage may vary. You might get a model that's not being set up as well, but I think it's got nothing to do with the hardware. It's just how the guitar is set up. So just bear that in mind because this is really, really good quality. Here we are, final thought times. Look, this guitar is super inspiring. Really fun to play as well. I really didn't know what was to be expected. I've played a lot of semi-hollows. I've played a lot of hollow body electrics. None of this kind of mid to inexpensive price point. And I'm really surprised with this. Gretsch has been doing some really good guitars at this price range. I reviewed one, I think the kind of Malcolm Young one on the channel, and it was a really good guitar, but maybe for me, it lacked a bit of attitude. This one has all that Gretsch vibe to it. And it's not just the look, it has that sound, it has that note clarity. You can actually hear every single note and I think that's what a good Gretsch should do. It's not muddy at all. It's just really very inspiring. It brings you to different places. And ultimately, that's what you want. I mean, yes, we buy new guitars because we have psychological problems or we've not been loved enough or whatever it is. But we also buy new guitars because we want to be inspired, right? If we're in a rut or if we're trying to maybe make some new music, we want to be inspired to try different things. I, I just started playing slightly differently on this and it has tons and tons of character. Ultimately, again, personal opinion, but the number one thing I look for in a guitar, except for the neck, is the character. Does it have balls? And this definitely have has loads of balls, but it can give you a nice hug as well. So very, very cool. I think at sort of 400 bucks price range, this is really hard to beat. I don't think it's in the same league as, you know, Epis and stuff like that. This is an incredibly cool just because of the vibe but also good sound in guitar and it can give you a lot of mileage so blues surf jazz rock even leaning into the hard rock you can do a lot of music on this you can do a lot of different styles it's really really good guitar so that's it guys i think i've been clear very hard to beat this guitar. I'm going to keep playing it now. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. This is the first Streamliner I've played because I've played the Electromatic guitars more than this. I was really impressed actually. Good specs, good price, tons of attitude. What else do you want from life? Let me know in the comments below. As always, be nice to each other, play guitar. Please don't leave nasty comments. If you don't like it, move on. And if you have constructive criticism, give it. Because we all love constructive criticism. So that's it, guys. Be nice to each other. Have fun. Play loads of music. Enjoy your life because it's a beautiful world. See ya.